Beers and Steinberg. You know what the f it is? Aries and Andy. You and a jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut coke. No political corrections. Always sleep. Being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this sh Before you were sucking on your mama. Mary Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bag holders. Rollers. Loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Aries. We made it, man. Canada. Nova Scotia. Yeah. Nova Scotia. Who is it? Steve. Hey, Steve. Actually, it's just Steve. Sorry. We're in Canada. I like that, the fact that you cleaned it up, because I was making it a little bit harder than it needed to be. Well, yeah, but it's Canada, so we had it. It's always more difficult in Canada. Yeah, Nova Scotia, jeez. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, here we go. Um, Avery Jones, longtime listener, first time writer. Oh, Steve, do your thing. No, it's A Steve. No, 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 but yeah. Oh, while we're in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, A Steve, do your thing. <laughs> threw me off. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> Uh, thanks for your patience. Thanks for your patience. That was French, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Patience. I wonder how we, we're going to find out. Uh, dear a a my name is Avery, and this is by far my favorite podcast. Aries have been a huge fan of you since Mad TV, but listening to the podcast, you've moved from being one of my top 10 all-time favorite stand-up comics to my number one. Attaboy. Uh, the impersonations, uh, characters, and random comedic performances – that you do on the podcast are funnier than 99% of stand-up comedians. Best one-hour comedy seconds. I'm a goddamn genius! <laughs> uh, also, your crowd work skills are top-notch. Uh, you can work a crowd as good as, if not better, than all-time greats like D.L. Hewley and Patrice. Before I continue to read, this email is spectacular. Dude, it's got the periods. It's got the commas. It's allowing me to drive safely. And it has all the love to make you, your heart just feel. Just Man, a lot of times these emails, I got bad brakes. <laughs> I got no seatbelt. There's no airbag. I'm doing 100 miles an hour blindfolded and drunk. And you notice that people with positive energy have positive punctuation. Yes. The allotable, miserable <laughs> that write in the show. <laughs> Also, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, my favorite impressions that you do are Shaq and Tony Soprano. Thank you, I appreciate that. Fuck a thanks. The f you want a, f a biscuit or a cannoli? Uh, Andy, at first I was wondering why a comedic genius like Aries <laughs> would do a podcast with a white guy who doesn't even try to be funny or entertaining. Well, after listening to about 20 episodes, I did my homework and saw some of your stand-up comedy on YouTube, and I quickly found out that my GTA, Andy, you are a funny Plus, you always keep us listeners entertained with the stories that you tell about you selling and doing in the 80s. <laughs> I'm glad that you are finally starting to slam your comedy on the table. No homo. It's supposed to be no ditty. And you are showing us how funny you really are. You know, uh, real quick, let me stop. Uh, I, I was listening to the pod the other day, and I got to pat myself on the back a little bit. Something I said in a moment that happened. And this is when... I, it really clicked to me when people go, yo, you and Andy's chemistry. When you did the joke you did, and I said something about, dude, between the puppy cuted and the dog, the peaky holes, and I forget what the other joke you did that was current. I said, yo, you you turning to Pippin. Nigga, I've been waiting on you. <laughs> that, that was such a cool it was, line. It was a good line. Yeah, it so, was a good so line. The, and that's what people mean when they say some of the peanut butter and jelly that's me and you. Uh... My favorite character on the podcast by far is Bobby Patterson. Thanks, kid. Wicked kid. Uh, my favorite saying on the podcast is $10, a lot of money. The funniest moment on the podcast is the first time that Aries talked about his feeling the cool breeze in his Jamaican accent. The cool breeze. Um, I agree with Aries 110%. Listeners should start from the beginning. I like this son. The love, the punctuation, the 
articulation, the the the, the I like the, the agreeing with the master. I love this nigga, man. If you was my slave, I would definitely keep you in the house and free you first. Um start from the beginning and listen to all the episodes in order from the first from the first episode to the most recent episode. This will allow them to have a deeper appreciation for how much the show has grown. Plus, they get to see how emailers get their theme songs, etc. For example, if you don't listen to all the episodes in order from the first episode onward, there is no way that you will understand why Ronald Williams' nickname on the podcast is Right Hook Ronald or the real reason why his theme song is so hilarious. Yo, we friends, B. You my friend, yo. I'm, I'm, you, I, you, you got tickets to the white boat party. I'm going to get you five white Me, you, and King Frito is going to have our own boot. Uh, sorry for the long email. Keep up the good work. All the haters. And keep on serving us that raw, uncut comedy. Yeah, yo. There is not a flaw in that email. Except for the way he listens. But other than that, man, it's on point. Yo, son. Yo, son. You. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. You. I like what you did there. It's a good email, man. Um, well, you know, Andy just told you, other than the way you listen, uh, you got no flaws, B. You got no flaws, man. It's a good email. Yeah. All positive. All positive. Um, positive vibes in Canada. By Kalsh. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, before we go any further, major shout out to Beth Spies. Oh, Yeah. Dude, when we say we like for the fans to come out, show us love, appreciation, let us know you listen to the pod. That way we can shake your hand, blah, blah, blah. Listen, Kulsh came out and represented in Toronto. My man, I can't remember his name, but he came out to Tempe in Phoenix, and he had on the magic shirt that said, success. Um, I know there's been other fans, of course, Shamar, whenever we come to Ontario, Beth Spies, we got a name to put with the face. White woman. She came and she had a hoodie on where she put a design on the chest. Oh, yeah. this And it's on the mug, too. But she had this on her sweatshirt, a picture of me and Andy where he goes, you know that actor from that movie? And I go, just give me a clue. <laughs> and then on the other side, it says, you're looking at an awesome comedian for Andy. And on mine, it said, I'm a goddamn genius. Yes. So, couldn't have been sweeter. Beth, thank you, baby. We love you. Uh, and Andy even said this after uh, we finished doing the merch. He went over, gave her a hug. He said, I got a little choked up. And I said, dude, I felt it. Yeah. I almost did, too. Because, dude, t- for her to go to that extent yeah. between the, the hoodie with the design, which was awesome, the two mugs coming out. Oh, man. It, it just I'm telling you, th- these are those moments where... Sometimes you just feel uh, appreciated, and it, and it's, it's it's as corny as it may sound. It is the little fuel that sometimes we need to keep going. Yeah, because when you go, man, I feel like we're wasting our time. This ain't really going nowhere. You know, blah 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 blah. There's the struggle. There's the fight. There's the pain. The hurt. Disappointment. That right there is the incentive to go keep going, man. Well, you know what's also really nice about when people come out to really lo- like really connect with us, and and this happened a few times. The lines are long. I mean, we're doing these theaters. There's you know there's a what was it like thirteen hundred people at this one. Yeah. And I don't know how many people stood in line, and you know some people just come up because they just want to say hi or whatever. Yeah. And they go through the line, whatever, and we appreciate that too, man. You don't have to just buy something if you if you wait and just want to dap <laughs> us up and say hello, that's fine too. But she waited to the end. So that she could have that moment. Yeah, and and that's happened a few times on the road that where people wait to the end, and and then she was just so cool. She waited to the end. She was happy to see us. I didn't know she didn't say who she was or anything. She did all her little stuff with us, and then at the end she goes, "I'm Beth," and then and I went, "Best spies." Yeah, yeah. She was like, "Yeah," I was like, "Oh." And then she broke out gifts for these little gifts for us, and just like took the time made him different for us. I, I just, you know, I so appreciated it because I, I, I'll be on, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever said this on the podcast, but this happens a lot for me. I'll be on there and people will just come up and, you know, rightfully so Aries gets lavished with praise, best comedian, 
Rah, and then just look at him, staring at him, telling him how great he was. And then they look over and they see that I'm standing there and they'll go, oh, you were funny, too. And nothing makes me more <laughs> mad. Nothing makes me more mad. Again, than I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just that you're funny, too. Just say, man, I really enjoyed you. I enjoyed you as well. There's something besides you're funny, too. I know. Is I'm, it the two? It's, it, I'm funny, too. It's it, because it's such an afterthought. Oh, yeah. Well, you're standing here, so I'll tell you you're funny. Like, you couldn't give him a f- And that, that's not true with everybody. It's just it's just that, so, so, you know, you know, it's like when I, I said this to Tara once. She, she made herself a sandwich. And then she goes, uh. I go, you made yourself a sandwich? He goes, yeah. I go, you didn't want to make me a sandwich? He goes, oh, I'll make you a sandwich. What do you want? I'll make it for you right now. I go, I don't want your afterthought sandwich. You made a sandwich for yourself. But it's still a tasty sandwich. You made a sandwich for yourself. You didn't think about me when you were putting your sandwich together. You put mustard and you put some turkey on and doing all your stuff. And then afterwards, you, you start to eat your sandwich and you see me standing there. And you didn't even have the decency to ask me why you had everything out and you could have made me a sandwich because you thinking about me and your nourishment wasn't your only thing on your mind. What about my, my significant other's nourishment? I want to make sure they're nourished. I'm sitting in the same house. I'm with you at the same time. You don't want to ask me if I want a sandwich? And you fit in the marriage? Is- yeah. And I said to her, but she's never done that after this one time. I go, I oh, well, God damn it. God damn, you did what you did. Yeah. You slapped her without slapping her. <laughs> I, go, I don't want your afterthought sandwich i don't want your afterthought compliment like i'm standing there and you go oh well you're funny too say dude i enjoyed you man i don't know you or i had people let have me, said that to me and that means the whole let difference let me explain something to you. when you when you're dealing with a three-piece set like <laughs> the main quote ingredient for a woman is the, it's what she's gonna suck on it's what she's gonna maybe she nuzzles the i don't know how much pleasure she gets out of uh, nuzzling but sometimes women forget that the are just as important or 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 i don't know just as important but they're important because it's part of the three-piece set hey the way your slapped my when you were hitting it hard man i loved it but not everybody didn't slap <laughs> now i'm saying no everybody got no everybody ain't got slappable but this is what I mean, though. She said something to me, and then she gave me something different. You something. Yeah. She thought it out. It wasn't just. It wasn't just like. Well, then you know she's. It, a- it wasn't an afterthought response. Like, oh, well, you were funny too. That that is so. That doesn't have any meaning to me. Listen, I'm the and you the, and and we go together. We are three piece set. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but sometimes because you know I'm the I get most of the. You know what I mean? I, rightfully so. I'm not complaining but about you what you're doing. But you are important. I just, I, you know what? It's just when you say, oh, you were funny too. It's just an, it's just throwaway line. If they said, man, I enjoyed you. That would be like, I actually listened to you. I appreciated you. Thank you. But uh, you were funny too. That doesn't mean it. I know I'm funny. That's how I got on the f- tour. <sighs> that doesn't mean you enjoyed me. I was funny too. Yeah, f- that. I, I'm sorry. It's just who I am. I'm a f- up person. So y'all know in the future, uh, don't hit him with the two. Say, how would you have liked to have had it said? Say this, man. Say, man, the way you slap your ball slapped that man, nice. Yeah, if you say that, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to buy shit merch. I'll give it to you. <laughs> uh, okay. So, Beth, thank you, sweetie. Much love to you. Thank awesome. you, thank you, thank, thank you, thank you. For, you. Yeah, it was really kind, and it was, it was needed for me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, TJ Tucker, finally. Finally, you guys coming to Europe. Uh, I'll be there at the Manchester Manchester date, boss. Also, uh, uh, let me stop real quick since we talking about Europe. Hey, Brandon, uh, if you come out, um, come on out, brother. I know we've had some some words back and forth, but it, but it's all love. Uh, matter of fact, you wear a t shirt that says "I'm a sucker," and <laughs> I'll know immediately that it's you. <laughs> um. Will you give him free tickets if he wears uh, a, a, a shirt that you make for him that says 23 on it? Great. Goat, greatest player ever. Jordan. Uh, will I Will I give, give him, him tickets? A, yeah, will you give him a ticket? A ticket. He, if he wants to bring someone, he has to pay for it. <laughs> I tell you what, I'll give you t- two free tickets. Uh, if you bring someone and that person's shirt says, I'm with, and your shirt says, <laughs> Uh, also, uh, the venue you're performing in London is pronounced Leicester Square. You butchered the f- out of that, but now you know before the <laughs> sucker chirps up. 
I'm an artist and have been a fan of yours since the blueprint. Andy, I'm becoming a fan. Every time you laugh, I laugh with you. You truly are infectious. Before I turn this message into a Kolsch hallmark, I respect you both highly. Respect to the other listeners. Keep the <laughs> running. My name is TJ Tucker. Till next time. See, your name sounds like a 70s black exploitation character. It's TJ Tucker. Or a black, uh, or a black, the black. Why did I even say black? The basketball player. Who? He used to play for the Suns. I don't know where he plays. His now. name was TJ Tucker? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. You know all things Suns. I know all things that are not important in life. <laughs> That's what I know. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Deidre and Johnson. Belgium. In addition to its waffles, Belgium is known for the atrocities committed against Africans in the Congo by King Leopold II. <laughs> uh, ooh. Did you know about that? No, but I do now. Wow, a little bit of history there. Yeah. Have you ever had waffles in Belgium? No, but I don't want waffles in the Congo, I'll tell you that. I don't want nothing in the Congo. That's waffles mixed with gorilla meat. Uh, uh, no, I, I don't even like Belgian waffles, to be honest. Really? I like the thinner ones. But Belgium is like... The big, airy ones. That I know, but Belgium is supposed to be like the creme de la creme. I like the thinner waffles. I like the ones on those... I like that round waffle that looks like it was made. Why have you ever had a Belgian waffle? Yeah. What don't you like about it? Too thick, too airy. I don't like the, I don't like um, pizza like that either. I like so you that. don't like Gemma waffles? <laughs> too thick, too airy. Oh man, I've never had a Belgian waffle. You I'd like to try have a one. Thick no waffle. No. You always have the thin ones. Yeah. The American ones. Well, yeah, but they serve Belgian waffles all over the place. Yeah, but I'm they ain't nothing like a Belgian waffle in Belgium. No, I'm I don't know. I have never had one. That's like fried chicken in the south at a house that don't speak good English. See, you go to a lot of uh okay. Go to a lot of people who are capitalizing on chicken and waffles mm -hmm. and they serve it with the like three or four pieces of Belgian waffle and then some chicken. So right. that's not how you, you need that thin waffle mm -hmm. and you need like uh depending on where you go, the little extra seasoning that they put in it and then mm -hmm. the uh your chicken on that waffle with that syrup right. and everything. Not that Belgian waffle. That doesn't work because it's too much try you're trying to come you compact too much in your mouth. Right. You gotta have the thin waffle. You know, let me <clears throat> go back a second. Uh we gave the shout out to Beth, but uh let me read you a quick email from her. Beth Spies, Montreal Show. Hey, a and &A, just got back from the Montreal Show. You guys were awesome. I had a blast. I was happy to meet both of you. I'm the boaties. I'm glad you like the mugs and the sweatshirt I made. Next time you come back to Montreal, I'll be front and center. P.S. I forgot to tell Andy. Congrats on his upcoming marriage. Much love, Beth. And then here's a picture of Beth and me and Andy with Beth. Yeah. Thanks, Beth. Man, that's so cool. Thanks for the... the, the I bet you she can make the Got some chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Something just tells me she's good with baking. She's, she thinks she's a good baker? I think she's a good baker. What's her house look like? Does it look like it has baking supplies? I see books. She reads. Yeah, but she's got a cozy feel to her. She was so sweet, man. Yeah, she's one man. of the nicest people that I've met on the road. She looked like if she gave you some when it's over, she'd wrap your up in a blanket. <laughs> in its own blanket. <laughs> just comes out with that. Hand towel, just uh, not a towel. It's a blanket. Blanket. I, you know, I, I, I like that when you get the, when you get done and your woman hits get, you with it. The, the towel goes. Note to Tara: When you finish Andy, bring him a hot towel and a sandwich. Uh, if you're gonna make yourself a sandwich, just ask me. That's all I'm saying. Just right. ask. Do you want a sandwich? You know what? That'd be lovely. I would love a sandwich. <laughs> or no, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I don't want a sandwich. Right. But. <clears throat> Not eating a sandwich and then going, oh, yeah, no, I didn't ask you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you want one? <laughs> okay, I'll make it. No, too late. Hola, Panchito. Hola, Panchito. Pancho Z, Aries predicted the future. Aries, remember when you were on Vlad TV and Vlad mentioned how Harvey Weinstein had just been convicted, it was going to prison, and then you said he would get out because this is America, and somehow it just always works out for rich white people. LOL. His convictions were overturned. Chris Rock had a great saying. He said that every great comedian is a fortune teller. I guess you fit the bill. Now on another note. A, do you know comedian Little Rel 
How How it's How Holloway, but you put Howie because he was shouting you out when he was on the Breakfast Club and he was giving you props about how you carried yourself on his recent interview with the Breakfast Club. But when Gerard Carmichael was recently on the Breakfast Club, he threw shots at you, but was trying to be sly because he said comedians who do crowd work and post on their social media, that's not art and comedy. The dude Gerard is a cornball, brother, as Rob Parker from Fox Sports would say. I don't want to talk about the Gerard thing because that's something that Ian and Andy are saving for part two. So, uh, but I will say this, I don't think he was taking shots at me because I think if he was going to take a shot at me, he would have said my name because Gerard don't seem like the type of dude to uh, hide. Um, but I do want to, that's something I definitely want to talk about because I, I adamantly disagreed with him saying that. Um, because prior to him saying that, he said the thing about comedians now, the thing they do is they took comedy clips and put them all over social media of them doing crowd work. So that wasn't just relegated to me. But anyway, let me go back. Um, I did want to mention uh, the Harvey Weinstein thing. Uh, DL had posted something about that. And when I read the comments, a lot of people were saying just that. Boy, when you're a white man in America with money and power, you really could get away with everything. And I had posted it and I said something. And this is why it's important, as Andy always talks about with the media, because I immediately deleted it once I was reading the comments and people were going, you guys are going off of what you're reading or hearing on social media. Yes, it was overturned, but he ain't getting out of prison because there were other things that weren't overturned. So for whatever reason, this one thing was overturned, but he's still in jail. It's not like he's getting out scot-free tomorrow because everybody was like, well, fuck it. Keep that same energy with Diddy. Let R. Kelly go if that's going to be the case. And this is why I go, man, this social media thing is can be dangerous because nobody wants to do the real news anymore. Nobody wants to watch the news for the facts. They want to go off of social media. Um, and we're not journalists, but I would think like a journalist, you want all the facts. Do you want, yeah. the, you want the facts? Yeah. So it was overturned, I believe, in L.A. Uh, because it was there was a quick rush to judgment because it's things like social media, not a rush, but uh, there was definitely uh, an influence. It influenced the judge right. is what they said. Uh, but he was convicted in New York. It might be the opposite way around. It might be right. convicted in L.A. and not in New York. So it was another state that overturned it. So he's still doing his time for what he was convicted right. of. Um, but they'll get back to this. This is, right. they'll, they'll go back and they'll either try it again or they'll do something. I don't know what it, it was, but he's, 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 he's locked up for what he did. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, that, that social media give you half the story Yeah. and run with it because it sounds good and people are clicking on it and then they put up post and you know, this is the problem. It is like you just said, it isn't journalists. This is this we're, we're living in a magazine news age. And you're just getting a little bit of brief information and that let your mind go on your own. And we, we need to do better, man. This is this is how we're getting this is how we get, we're, we're unwinding. We're unwinding. And we had to unwind a little bit because we, we had a lot of problems in our culture. So we unwound, but you can't just go like a rubber band all the way, all the way out. You gotta come, you gotta have some culture that's stuck together and some things are put in our culture and in our in our systems and our beliefs to hold that together so that we do get the right information we do understand equally across the board what's going on and that's not going to happen with social media this is this is a game that people are playing yeah um so the weinstein is still in jail still in jail and he ain't getting out not yet we don't know i don't know what's next uh, i'm never going to say somebody can't get out of jail they, they could but I, he's in jail it was a conviction, like you said, that was overturned. Dude, I just don't understand. Like, when you got that much money and power, especially money, just pop. What you in jail for over when you can just buy it? You know, that pulp was to be the best bullet. Listen, I'm, uh, this isn't going to be said. This will age well. And in the clip that I'm about, what I'm about to say, if you take it out of context, it's not going to it's not going to look good for me. But I'll say it anyway. These executives, as they came out and threw out their power that they had, 
Um, it was part of the casting couch was part of of the Hollywood movie system. You wanted something. That's the producer. You did whatever it took to get that part because that's what it, that's how it worked. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm saying this without judgment. I'm saying this. This is the reality. And some as as that as we unwind again, as I'm saying culturally, as you unwind, because there's some things that you got to get rid of that are caught up in all that 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 tight ball of wildness there. You got to get rid of some of that. And that that had to go. But who are you that that's holding on? Who's out when 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 we come down with it? His was out. I'm not saying he was ever right. I'm just saying he was the one that was caught. Uh, many others were caught. He should have been caught sooner. But that's part of why I'm saying this. That culture didn't allow people to get in trouble for it. That's why he was able to do it as long as he was. I think that when you, whenever you're doing something that you in your heart and in your common sense knows is wrong, you have to anticipate you can't get away with it forever. You always get caught. Somewhere down the line, you always get caught it always comes back to bite you in the ass. rightfully so but this is not just a reflection on him it's a reflection on our culture our culture let this happen forever and even in that 10 years there's about a 10 year span where people did come out against him and it kept getting swept up because our culture didn't allow that to happen they just assume that they just they just that they looked at it and like i just said the casting couch was part of hollywood they just let that keep going now, it wasn't all just, you know, but these people, everybody has these issues. Not everybody. Some people have issues. I mean, well, why do you want someone to watch you take a shower? First of all, listen, I'm trying to get in better shape. I look better than I have in years. I don't want anybody to see me take a shower. Did you see what Harvey Weinstein looked like? Why would you want that? that that's is that punishment for them? <laughs> Why, why would you want why where in you that you have some kind of weird thing that you need someone to watch you take a shot that is yeah i honestly i would have to be like I, I don't in the way that i look the way that i look made me want to change the way that i look because i did like taking a shower with tara but i didn't want to put tara through that she should have had to put tara through tara yeah you know she shouldn't <laughs> tara should not have to go through tara <laughs> He, 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 I didn't want someone to see that. There, there, these, these, there's some mental issues going on with people that do things like this. I, you know, I love. Uh, well, listen, but but in all in all, somewhat defensive fairness, the same way you might have your mental hangups about how you look, he his mental things in terms of that might not be hangups to him. He, that might turn him on because he thinks he looks good, or he the idea of a woman watching him. That's what does it for him. Yeah, punishing a woman, making. Yeah, but her... I'm just saying, you calling it punishment. He might think of it as a reward. No, there's no way you have. You're to... thinking with common sense. I'm thinking that you have some. There's some reality in your eyes that you have to. Now, hey. and I, you know what? And I'm saying this. And listen, I shouldn't say it this way because just because, let's say you're a chiseled dude, and you that doesn't mean that women should have to watch you take a shower either. It, it's about what the person. It's about. Not manipulating or not but if you're a forcing dude, someone else. Most likely, a woman would love to watch you well, take a shower. I think a woman what might, woman wouldn't want to watch Chris Hemsworth take a shower? She might want to just take a peek. I'm not saying, but with with uh, with Weinstein, you're definitely going in with your eyes closed. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying, going back to what I was saying originally. It was there. It was known. So it's a reflection on us. And the reason when something like that happens and what I do think some of this happened to <clears> Weinstein <throat> is that because we are repenting for our sins, we're like pointing at at someone that broke these rules and is going, bad, do something about it. Worst you could do, put him on. It's us. It's us, too, because we allowed this to happen for years after it already had come out. People had known that this was happening and no one was protecting anybody. So that was the extra that was put on his case. And he doesn't have to pay for all of our sins. He should pay for his. But we all have to take a little responsibility. If you knew, not when I say you all, like the person living in, in Dakota that doesn't have anything to do with movie business, I, I don't know how I'd fault them for that. But our culture in that, in Hollywood and people that would knew, we're, we're, respo we're responsible if we knew. So... Our, our rush to judgment to point at him because we don't want to take the responsibility that we let it go on. <clears throat> so 
I, I understand why it was overturned. There's part, like I said, one state did not, it, it didn't affect another trial. Um, he, he has more to go through. Uh, you know, whatever. I, 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 the person who's handled this the best, and, and I, I do want to make a comment about it, is, 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 uh, is uh, Louis C.K., man. The joke that he that he does about you know, you know he has, that was his thing. You know he liked to jerk off in front of, in front of women, and so but he did ask. So where yeah. is the you know where is you know I, I you get consent right, but him saying that you know that's the thing that's is that everybody knows what his one thing is. Everybody knows like he can't go meet the queen of the the the, the uh, like uh, the the prince and. Uh, he could run into Harry somewhere, and Harry's going to shake his hand and go, "Ooh, that's that's the hand that right. he jerks off with in front right. of people, no matter what." So he lives with it that, that way. Uh, did he have power, and so that's why people might have said yes, yeah, maybe? But he did go in and he asked. This this is a this is to be continued. I don't want to waste more time on it. Uh, ba ba Freaknik. From Christian Paul. Hey, what's up, ANA? I recently watched the Freak Nick documentary. I gotta, I gotta check this out. Uh, and thought it was pretty interesting. I think the history behind it and how the it got the name Freak Nick is crazy. You guys should definitely check it out. I'd love to get y'all's take on it if it's worth a segment to talk about. That's all I got. Uh, thanks for reading this. Keep up the greatness, ANA. Thanks, Christian Paul. You know what Freak Nick was, right? No, what was it? It was the big uh, festival that would happen every year in Atlanta. Uh, oh, no, I do know what it is. Yeah, yeah. it would be like, um, be on an STD scavenger. <laughs> scavenger. <laughs> Chinese. It, 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 it was young, young people just acting wild. Um, and there's a documentary on it? Yeah, I want to see it, man. Okay. I never went to it, but I always thought, you know, when that was popping, I was too old for that. Or maybe, I don't know. But, you know. You're never too old to get an STD. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're too old to go searching that, for that, him. That, that, that's a public service yeah, announcement. You're, you're too old to go searching for him, but you're never too old to get one. Yeah. Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. This is from Roy Robinson. Um, <clears throat> wait, wait. I just want to do this before you go on. Bring the more you know. Sorry. Oh, NBC. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> Three Body Fallout 97. What's up, Aries and Andy? This is Rory Jean, a.k.a. Kung Fu, the Four-Eyed Panda. Love the show. Been listening for quite a while and your savagery. Uh, Aries is the highlight of the show, along with Andy's calm, but equally hilarious rebuttals. This is golden. Uh, yo, a couple things. Please give Three Body... Pro oh, oh, Three Body Fallout. Okay. Please give uh, Three Body Problem the full name of the show, a chance to... The is fire. I truly believe it's the truest depiction of what would happen if aliens really got in touch with us. Spoiler alert. Stop trying to contact them. Also, check it out. Fallen <clears throat> Fallout on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. That is also super dope. Even you've never even you've never played. Oh, even if $10 a lot of money. Even if you've never played the video games, you'll love it. Oh boy, Walton Guggins is the shit in everything he's in. Also, check out if you haven't already X Men '97. Man, they brought back the old school animation with a vengeance. The shit is off the chain. I want One, to see that. Do you really? Yeah, I do. One word: Cyclops. Uh, last but not last, least, here's my O Steve contribution. All right, I'm gonna have to save it from there and uh, use that for the next one. Uh, yeah, man, that three body thing. I, I remember when I mentioned that. I, I, I tried to give it a chance. And listen, maybe I'll go back to it. It just, one, it's it's a slow build. And two, I didn't really get what was happening. Um, but, you know, I, I got to go back and, and check it out. It looked like it had the potential to be the shit, But I was like, what the f*** is this? You sound like a white guy in the 70s. What? Watching what's happening. I didn't really get what's happening. Oh, you didn't? It was a slow build. Uh the TV show? Yeah, I'm just joking. Like the, that's oh. what a white guy was saying when he was watching what's happening in the '70s. But that's a half-hour sitcom. Yeah. How? How? Because how... he was a white guy. Yeah, I know, but he didn't get, get it. How bad is your attention span? 
You can't let black people entertain you for 30 minutes. Yeah, well, rerun, just, you know, that was... Uh, you, I want to say something about this. Wait. <laughs> How did rerun get that that part? Uh, what's his, What was his name? Fred Berry? Yeah. I don't know. Because he, you know, he wasn't the ideal looking person. Nobody in the 70s was ideal looking. So that's they kept I mean. real ugly... They, I won't say the word ugly, but they kept real people... In front of the camera, and once you got to the, once you started getting to the eighties, mid eighties and nineties, L.A. Law, it got beautiful. Everybody had to be beautiful. Everybody had to be beautiful. I'm just checking because we we we're we're back in the seventies then now. Are we? Yeah, because not everybody's beautiful that's on TV now. Mm, maybe, even the ugly people are beautiful, but but not in a traditional way. No, in a Uma Thurman kind of way. Yeah, some, you said it best, creatures. There you go. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Mark Johnson, black women with afros. This is L.A. Uh, lo, L.A. Love the Boss. I'm sure you've seen her on social media. I absolutely love this woman. She is too gorgeous. Um No, he sent me some pictures. Sorry, I couldn't add the pics in the first email. This is Tiana Paris. She's beautiful. Man, look at that. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Black women with afros. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know how I feel about it. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that. Gabatron 88. Ten inch mutant ninja turtles and the adventures of Jasper. My apologies for not emailing more often. Just switched jobs and it's been a hassle getting used to working from home again and not be distracted every two seconds by having to go outside and breathing fresh air when I feel like it. I have a quick tip that might save you guys hours on clarifications and apologies. Have you guys ever thought about adding a disclaimer at the beginning of the show? Like us regular fans know Andy is a racist and that whatever he says doesn't come from a place of malice. So why not eliminate the 10 to 15 minutes he takes pre-apologizing before every sentence by disclaiming from the start? I don't know that he apologizes. Uh, I would make the convo, it would make the convo flow better uh, for some of us with HDHD who forget what the point was by the time he gets to it. Well, nigga, we can't... Uh, Make up for your shortcomings. Yeah, and I usually forget what the point is by the time I get to it anyway. So y'all both don't even know what <laughs> you heard or what was said. <laughs> I listened to the show. Uh, he said HDH. I thought he was saying that he had high definition. Right, right, right. <laughs> but what is it? Is he, did he say it wrong? I don't know. I don't even know. I just oh. heard. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, he said ADHD. AD, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's not, if, it, if not, it's okay. I listened to the show a, du uh, a double the speed to keep my attention from wandering off as he does this. If he's worried about what new listeners might think, tell them they can write off and start from the first episode. It's not new listeners. It's people being able to clip without anything and put up about you that is up. If they can do it with TV series, they can do it with a podcast. Titles, White Streak, a la Blue Streak. After serving five years for a botched heist, the thief returns to the location of his treasure and finds it now as a, an adult film corporation. He now has to climb his way up the corporate ladder by impersonating, starring Martin Lawrence as Miles O. Uh, you know, it's, it's something about, it should be white streaks, which Allah is, you know, uh, but that should have been someone in the description. Drumline is pound line. <laughs> a talented streetwalker joins the high energy, high stakes, world of has to face her greatest challenges yet an entire college drum squad starring nick the cannon as himself and orlando bones uh, how many how many kids do you think nick cannon would have after making that that yeah uh, <laughs> probably a whole film crew <laughs> to help shoot the next one <laughs> My wife and I were watching a Watch Mojo video of Wizard of Oz when she asked if I remember the SNL version. 
I did not, as I grew up on that pure, uncut Bolivian yayo that was Mad TV. Fred Armisen's Chicken was okay, but it had nothing on Aries' character Jasper, whom we never found out if he ever got a leg. That's funny. Uh, episode 562, American Me, was the movie Edward James almost got That's greenlit nice. by the Mexican mafia over the scene where the boss gets ripped in juvie. Vlad interviewed Danny Trejo Machete, who was the person that mediated talks between EJO and the gang. Be Real Cypress Hill verified the story as he was still bleeding in those days. Blood In, Blood Out was the movie that got Benjamin Bratt to play nothing but cops ever since. Demolition Man. P.S. Michael Richards just posted the second attached pic on the Instagram. Not sure if he'll be getting back on stage soon. Okay. Um, what was it I was going to say in there? Oh, have you ever ate at uh, Trails Tacos? No, that's his place? Yeah. Danny Trail? Yeah, it's, no. a, it's in L.A. Is it really? Yeah, it's pretty good. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I saw him at the mall once. Uh, nice guy, man. Dude, his life is... Yeah. It, it, it's it's unfortunate that we can't get there earlier in life. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get there earlier in life. Many people I know couldn't <laughs> get there earlier in life. It just seems... Uh, it's just nice when you didn't... Whatever you did to f*** up early in life, you can get past it so that you can get it later in life. Does Danny Trejo not look like a criminal? Well, he was a criminal. No, I know, but I'm just yeah. saying, what other role... Is, can he be the goofy dad in a comedy? Can he be the leading sexy man? Dude, I would love to see him as the goofy dad in, in like a, a Mexican comedy where he's like, I mean, honestly, I'm going to be typecasting, but, but, but because of his look, but he plays like the guy who uh, owns the, uh, you know, like the salvage yard, like almost like the Red Fox kind of character, but that with Danny Trejo, like. There's something there that could be done today that would be really cool. Comedically, for him. I think he could do I, I, something about his start. You know, just that 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 uh, that hard. Right. It would be funny. I, I don't. I, I I believe every hard ass like p- p- person who has that look has the ability to to kind of turn because you have to be able to when you have kids and you have life. You know, you 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 know you make your kids laugh. You can't be that guy all the time. So yeah. uh, he has to have that skill, and he's a talented actor. I would love to see him do something besides that one mm-hmm. character. I definitely think he has. He was there was there was moments that are humorous in uh, what was the vampire movie? Well, there's a lot of those. Uh, yeah, the one that he's in though. Uh, it was oh. Quentin Tarantino. Oh, one. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah, there's little moments in there where he's like he's. It's somewhat humorous when he Dude, has the makeup I, on. I, I like that movie, but once they start. With the, the turning into the vampires and the limbs being ripped off and they get graphic. I'm done. It's so good and it's a little I'm campy. Done. It's not that. It's just explosions of blood. Oh, man. It, it's not explosions of blood, but in pure Quentin Tarantino S style, it's so over the top. Do you know what? If I could afford this, this is what I would do. This is what I would do for like a birthday or Christmas present for you. If I could afford it. And if I had that kind of relationship, I would ask Quentin Tarantino to make me a video of someone eating chicken wings <laughs> with the snapping of the bones and, the, and then blood shoots out. out. Sauce oh. is just running down the guy's if face. If you gave me that for my birthday, I would make your life a personal <laughs> hell for five years. I would, they, dude. If I could afford that, man, I would. Ask, I, dude, he can't stand. Let me these, tell you something. These, when these I'm when I'm scenes. scrolling through Instagram. And I see something that even looks like it's about to be grotesque, like with animals. I, I, I immediately scroll. I, I don't want to see what you're about to do with that evil. Oh, I, I don't. So if you were alive in the time, at the time, I mean, it still happens today, so I shouldn't even say that that way. But if you were alive, if you were involved in like a, a farm where they went outside and just like that's where the chicken came from the farm. And you have to cut the chicken and kill it. Could you I mean, eat, could you eat the chicken after you know that it was? Running? If I saw the 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 the, the, the killing, and, <laughs> nah, yo. If you came home, could you, oh yeah, because when we were, ate those ducks at that China, when duck is at the Chinese restaurant, you you don't even look at it when you walk. You walk the past ducks it. hanging in the window. You and you, you walk past the head off and nah, yo. 
<laughs> to give me my food without heads and faces. So you already done. So you would have existed in in, in Son, old let me, time. Let me days. tell you something. Um, in the he 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 days, he 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 he. <laughs> no, dude. There are times when I go through Instagram, and they'll show the pig, like the, for the luau. Yeah. How do you take the meat off that pig with that head on it? That is so gross. It, you could see what it was. So you won't eat fish if it has the head on it? No. No. There's some people, and you know I love fried catfish, fillets. There are some people that make the fried catfish with the head. The whole. I won't do it. I will not do it. <laughs> Ew. It almost sounded like you're running for office. I won't do it. I, I will, will not, not do, do it. it. <laughs> this ad is, I, what do they always say? Uh, I say it in the. No, uh, I'm Mary Spears, and I approve. This I message. approve this message. <laughs> Animals, food with the head. I won't do it. I will not do it. I'm Mary Spears, and I approve. No f- way. Uh, my, uh, I won't even eat with the head on it. I opened up a, a big pot that my grandma was cooking once, and uh, there's the cow head just sitting in there. Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus, dude! On one episode of Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives. They were saying that some of the tastiest part of the pig is the cheeks. Yeah, the cheeks. And when they, like that, oh, the pot, and pulled the motherfucking pig up by the ears so that they could scrape the meat off the face. No, I'd rather eat out of a garbage can. I think Trejo has that cabeza. The, 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 it's the cow. Oh, it's, it's the, it's Jesus. The, it's, the, oh. it's the cow face. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And, and, and in, in sushi, they have, uh, oh. yeah, uh, what's, what's it called in sushi? It's... Uh, it's the yellowtail cheeks. It's some of the best. It's some of the best tasting. It's the softest. It's the it's 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 unbelievable. I don't have to eat the best. <laughs> I don't have to eat the best. I'll settle for third best. Put a head. Take the head off that. Dude, I love shrimp. Love shrimp. But them places where the head is on the shrimp. Yeah. With the long wire, whatever, yeah. that, that, and that beady eye. Nah, son. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. So when you go to sushi, if you if you get it the raw the raw shrimp, I, I don't do raw. It's ama. I think it's ama heavy. Is what you you to eat raw? Yeah, raw shrimp. Yeah, I didn't even think you could. And, eat and raw they shrimp. have they they cut off the head and they just they have it sitting there. Some people eat the head. We'll suck this stuff out of the head. Yeah, those are savages. Those are cannibals. Uh, Carrie Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Put together an NBA lineup without using any legends. So that means no Bird, Magic, MJ, Kobe, Pippen, Shaq, LeBron, etc. His top five are Amari Stoudemire, Rasheed Wallace, Grant Hill, Allen Houston, Chauncey Billups. Oh, wow. But you don't... Rasheed Wallace and... Nah, he's not a legend. No. Especially when he said the dumb shit. Listen, I did the podcast. My man, uh, Gerald Brown, used to play in the NBA. He has a sports podcast. And I did a sports podcast. And I was on with... uh, Rick Mahorn and uh, uh, forget who, who the other dude was. Oh, uh, well, he used to play for the Trailblazers, Bonzi Wells. Um, and I was supposed to do it with BJ Armstrong, but never got around to it. But anyway, Rashid was on Instagram and basically said, Mike Jordan even won that great of a defender. Done. <laughs> um, so he's not a superstar because uh, of that. Please. Okay, so. Armari Star- Stoudemire? Nah. Okay. Great player, but not a superstar. Uh, if I had to put a starting five of non-superstars, Jesus, at center, Rick Smiths. Uh, this is tough because my only f- would win is, but power <laughs> forward. Uh, God damn, I don't even know that many power forwards that aren't superstars. Uh I don't know. Small forward, I agree. Grant Hill, uh, but he he wasn't a superstar. He, he was he was, but he got hurt and that derailed everything. He wasn't, you know. I mean? He spent more time in injury than he did not. I, I think for this to truly, we we should have to go. I think when when this is said, you should have to go. Where did he play? That's that to me. Right, right. Pull a Charles Barkley. Let me make it easier. Here's my starting five of bums. Uh, 
at center, Manute Bowl. Uh, at power forward, Oliver Miller. Uh, at small forward, Popeye Jones. At two guard, uh, Smush Parker. Uh, and at point guard, um, who was in a great point guard? Uh, I don't know. Who was in a great point guard? I don't know. You know of a shitty point guard or a guy that wasn't that great? The great point guard. Not a great point guard? It's yeah, it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> I knew it was good. Mario say. Chalmers. Really? Yeah. Okay. It feels like it'll take you two days to put oh, this no, list yeah, together. Oh, no, yeah, I can't do that. Name-wise and then me thinking about it. Yeah. No, forget it. Um, is Pistol Pete? Is he? Is he oh, a, Pistol Pete was the he, shit. He's famous then, right? Yeah. He's an all-star. Oh, yes, he's the, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Some would say that Pistol Pete was magic before magic. He he was up there, but he yeah. he, he doesn't get called out, though, when we do... Or, you know, he's in the top 50. Yeah. But he's, I don't think he gets called out when you do right. your top, you, you know. Andre Potts, mad Wonka hater, says hello. Mad hey, Wonka. guys. Long time listener, first time writing in. Stefan, do your thing. Uh, the podcast is the only thing that gets me through my Wednesdays and Thursdays. Sometimes on other days, if I'm doing something and I need a little entertainment in the background, I was reading this book the other day and I thought it was kind of entertaining and thought that perhaps you guys should give it a read and maybe review it. It's called The Couple Next Door by Shari Lepena. Lepina. This book is a thriller mystery type, so it had me hooked after the first few pages. Just thought since you guys review movies uh, that once in a while, why not a book? Uh... I know, I know, not man food, LOL. Well, you just answered your own question. What, look, under your, look under your chair. Let's see what you want. This Oprah kind of a thing right oh, there. Oh, right, right. I'm a late 80s baby, so of course I've been a fan of Aries for a long time. I feel like you don't get enough flowers for how far you've come in the comedy game. But of course haters are going to hate. They hate us because they ain't us. Well, you meant to say ain't us, ain't us, but you put ain't us. <laughs> They hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, something like that. LOL. I haven't been able to go see you guys live the one time you guys were in Baltimore. I wasn't able to make it because I had to work overnight. I really was pissed. I didn't get to see you guys up close. I've seen a couple of clips of Andy, and I love the dark humor. It's the funniest shit. I feel like people don't have a sense of humor when you dig a little deep. No ditty. Uh, you had this abortion <laughs> joke that folks looked uncomfortable, and I was laughing my ass off. LOL. Am I sick? Uh, no, just have a sense of humor. Come on, son. I don't really agree with putting bars of soap in my ass to clean it. I mean, other people got to use that bar of soap, bro. I feel where you're coming from, though. Bacteria is bacteria. It's either on the towel or it's on the bar of soap or it's on the bar of soap. I don't think the bar is open there. <laughs> yeah, you never said that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. But don't put your ass hair on it. Yeah. Nobody wants to wash their body with a bar of soap that looks like Michael Jackson's hair in the Pepsi commercial. Chumal. Also, feel like you guys deserve a movie kind of like a Harold and Kumar type of thing, except you two have to make it open and close for the big three of comedy, and you only have two days to get there from Buffalo, New York, to Vegas. I would say the big three would be Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, and the returning Eddie Murphy for one last run. I'm thinking there definitely has to be three things in this movie. First, it has to be you two being assaulted by a gang of koalas that are led by Right Hook Rollins. <laughs> it's close. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I dreamt this up. It feels like a dream. Uh, I dreamt this up before LOL. Second thing has to involve, of course, Pat Patterson. I feel like you guys are in a hotel room and you you go looking for your room and knock on the wrong door, not looking at the number and Pat opens the door. Oh, f there's a that lives next door. Hey, honey, hide the jewelry. Oh, snap. He's with it. Never mind. Just hide all the loose change and fried chicken. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, the response 
from the person in the room should sound a lot like Tom Brady. He says back, okay, honey, should I take my rings off the ice and put them back in my asshole? <laughs> LMAO. I'm lost. This is why he thinks soap goes up there. He soaps up the rings. <laughs> okay. Oh. You can't make this kind of joke up. I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> a black guy and a Jew show up to my hotel room while I'm eating Super Bowl rings out of Tom Brady's asshole. By the way, I'm Pat Patterson. Oh, I was still in character? I should have been. The third thing would definitely have to have Gemma. You guys show up at an adult expo and get separated. Hear me out. We oh, uh, There's a scene of Andy dealing with a bunch of women that are in wrestling, and he gets to be a referee. Remember, this is an adult expo, so you know where it was going after that. Aries ends up finding Gemma, but she wants to record it and break it down in John Madden form with all your boys present, LOL. Uh, Niwo's my letter just got way too... What the f*** is N-E-W-H-O-Z? Niwo's my letter just got way too long. I just thought... I say, what's up, God? What's up? Ugh. You know, this was a positive <sighs> letter, though. It just didn't have positive punctuation. Man, I'm telling you, and, 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 and the guy that wrote earlier, it was a breath of fresh air. Do you see the difference? When all the things are right, it's a smoother read. Oh, my God. My brain is like a mosh pit right now. Um, wait a Stay alive, and Andy, keep your black hand strong. Hanging out with Aries is turning you into Yao Ming when he hung out with all the black people on the Rockets. What the f*** is this talking about? Uh, welcome to the brotherhood of Hanging Low Tribe. Peace from your boy, Mad Wonka Hater. By the way, I'm also an inspiring artist, and no, not a whack rapper. I hate those guys. LOL, I'm currently creating a webtoon called Morality that is on webtoons.com and the webtoon app, which I have on my Instagram. My name is Mata, Mata, Matawanka Hater 88 Please give it a look, and if you're interested in comics or need something drawn out, I got you. Also, on top of that, I'm working on the animation for the comic that I'm writing. I have dreams, and I really want them to come true. If Samuel Jackson started his acting career in his 40s, I can make it happen in my 30s. Hard work and dedication, guys. You are the big example of that hard work pays off. You are the big example of that hard work pays off. Some of you talk like cavemen. You are the big example of that hard work pays off. No, you know who that is. That's uh, that. That's Manute Bull. Manute Bull. <laughs> or no, uh, Dikembe Mutombo. De De Dikembe is better, yeah. Yeah. You are a big example of that hard work pays off. Even if it only pays with hot lemon pepper wings and hot monkey love with Cherokee bubble booty, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you just drop character. Oh, it was, God. Dude, it was it was well intended. Oh. He only went off the rail a couple times. He had Man, it. my head hurt. <laughs> oh, my God. That was all over the place. Yeah. He was high when he wrote that. Oh. Come on. Please write back in. Let me know. Were you a little high when you wrote the letter? You had to be, son. And if that's sober, maybe drugs will smooth you out. <laughs> it, sounded it. Little, it just sounded a little high. That's it. That's a show? That is a show. I can't read nothing else after that. <laughs> Let me give out some dates, man. Let me pull this up real quick. What the f*** is my phone doing? All right, here we go. Guys, you're listening to this. Uh, we are now going to be in Portland, Oregon at the Helium, uh, May 2nd through the 5th, May 9th. Uh, we're going to be at Meyer Theater in Green Bay, Wisconsin. May 11th, the Wilbur in Boston. Uh, May 24th to the 26th, we're at the Funny Bone in Richmond, Virginia. May 30th to June 2nd, we're at Off the Hook in Naples, Florida. June 13th through the 16th, we're at Cap City in Austin, Texas. Probably going to be out there a day early if you're running around. Say hi. Uh, June 22nd, Aries is going to be at the Albany 
Municipal Auditorium in uh, Albany, Georgia. And I will be getting married that day, so I will not be out there. Uh, guys, I wish you the best. Uh, enjoy. That's a show. Um, incidentally, uh, my man that I went out with last night, Preach, yeah. uh, that was at our show uh, in Montreal, uh, he took me to the comedy club he said he works at. You did go to it? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then I was like, is there comedy on Monday nights? Because uh, Andy had possibly said he wanted to check it out, uh, the both of us, on Monday. And he said, it is, but it's French. Oh, so we're not going to understand a f- thing. No, because when I went there last night, the comedy portion was over, but they were doing a podcast in one of the other rooms that was packed. But it all was in French. Um, and uh, So the only thing we're going to understand there is patience. Patience. So let's put the do 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 <laughs> and then after we, I can tell you, after we hung out, there was a, he took me to a Chinese spot because I was like, yo, I, I'm going to get some food. The spot stayed open until three in the morning. And he, man, the shrimp toast and the shrimp dumplings. Yeah. was banging, dog. Dude, they have a big uh, Asian community out here. Yeah, man. This was off the meter. All, all, can, all the big cities in Canada do. Yeah, man. It was good, though. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to check that out. Yeah. Again, um, respect to any, to all comedians that do comedy abroad. But y'all really, it, it, it really is reminiscent of America. We're the 92 Dream Team. And the rest of the world, we, we killing them by 40. Stand up, comedians in other countries, they just, they can't f*** with us. You can't, London has great comedians, man. I know, but dude, I'm just saying, like, you know, what made the 92 Dream Team so potent was it was the, I mean, most teams are dominantly black except Christian Leitner and John Stockton, but you're talking about the baddest <laughs> to lace them up. And, and b- b- basketball is a sport. It's our sport. Comedy is an American thing. We, we, we own comedy. And because of the different... Melting pots of personalities. Women, men, black, white, Asian, Latino. That, that's, an, that's a powerful explosion. It's also because our imprint on the world, it, it, we, what we talk about has more resonance all over the world. When you're, if you're a French comic and you're doing comedy in France, a lot of that is going to be very pointed at French. Yeah. That's not, no. It's, but it's not going to have... That don't it, have a funny sound. But it doesn't have a worldwide effect either. So that's why when you go to other countries that maybe aren't as global, it it, it doesn't feel as pungent to you. I'm telling you, look at this. You don't know the culture, so it doesn't Our seem Our 92 important. dream team of comedians. Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, Shane McGillis, Andrew Schultz, if he was still alive... Patrice O'Neill, Ari Spears, Sarah Silverman, uh, I gotta throw, what's my girl? Cheryl Underwood, Sherry Shepard, was that nine? Um, Louis C.K. Give me two more. David Tell. David Tell, one more powerful hitter. I'm trying to remember everybody you just said. Yeah, well, if you say something, somebody said, I'll be like, I said that. No, I'm just trying to. Remember. Chris Rock. Oh, you didn't put it. Oh, yeah. See, that's what Who's f- with that lineup? Jelly de le Poitois from France. No, no but, but that's what I'm saying. Culturally, we have a bigger footprint across the world, so our stuff makes more sense. You don't feel like American politics makes a difference around the world. Do you really do? Do you know anything that's going on in French politics? So they're they're they're. You couldn't do a political joke outside of France if you're a French comic that is involved in France. Okay, so let's say you're not doing a political joke. Let's say you, as a Frenchman, you're doing a joke. Well, then you take Hollywood and the impressions that our movies have all around the world. It affects us more. We don't. How many? How many foreign films have you seen? Exactly. So I mean, it, well, yeah. Why? Why? Because our culture affects more culture. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah. our comedy would have that same kind of effect. Our d- is the biggest d- in the world. <laughs> Even if it isn't, it has a greater reach. Come on, B. America's d- <laughs> is black and length, white and dip. You know what I mean? And 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 the. Is made up of all other cultures. 
It's too much potency. That's why there's all those wrinkles on the. It's all the oh, all the other cultures, man. Just lining up. They make up the. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the base in the head is black and white. Who's with that? <laughs> I like how you made uh, Shane Gillis. You made him. Uh, you made him uh, uh, Irish because you made him McGillis. <laughs> oh, did I say McGillis? <laughs> He probably is. I don't even know if he, what he is, but uh, it's Shane Gillis. But it was funny. Are we Are we done? Yeah, I think we're done. <laughs> I want to go eat. Oh, done. there it is. All right, guys. Hey, man. Thanks for checking us out. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Pine Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.